notes and documents of Dr. Michael Simkins, who was dispatched to Egypt in the summer of 1976 to investigate a newly unearthed Egyptian tomb. These documents have been collected for reference purpose and are only to be accessed by authorized personnel. Journal Entry, evening of June 11th, 1976. Flight was delayed. Intolerable, I say. Almost cost me my window of opportunity. Landed safely in Cairo, and joined a small convoy heading to the excavation site. They were being led by Dr. Sky Alamin, a specialist in ancient Egyptian, Arabic, Greek, you name it. Quite fetching, too. The ride to site was a paltry three hours in comparison with the flight, but my buttocks are grateful for the respite nonetheless. It is too dark to venture out and explore the ruins now. We'll wait for the morrow. This is going to be exciting. Journal Entry, evening of June 12th, 1976. Amazing. Absolutely, utterly amazing. Initial reports of the excavation's size and scope were ludicrously underestimated. The digging crew was clearing out some fallen rock and debris from the tomb this morning when a portion of the floor gave way. Thankfully, the fellow who was working there was not injured, though it would behoove him to be a bit more careful in the future. These ruins and the artifacts within are one of a kind. It does not do to go around knocking over statues, even accidentally. Anyway, once the floor gave way, and we hurried over to check on Hassan, we saw through the hole to an entirely undiscovered passageway running beneath the tomb. We went down into it, but following it proved too risky. It's a labyrinth down there. Turn after turn after turn. We dared not progress any farther without a map. We returned to the surface. The walls of the passageway are covered in hieroglyphs, and unlike those of the tomb above, they retain a very fresh luster. Most of the figures come from the ancient myths. The god Thoth is prominent, and I thought I saw several walls referring to the Ogdawad. Dr. Alamin is just as excited as I am. She is much better versed in the ancient stories than I. The images she saw surprised her, and she said they subverted some of the basic motifs in other Egyptian accounts. Closer examination is an absolute must. Journal Entry, evening of June 15th, 1976. Been so busy that I neglected to complete entries the last two nights. Hopefully I can recall everything important. This was our third day of exploring and mapping out the tunnels. That chamber beneath the tomb that Hassan so kindly discovered for us appears to be some sort of receiving room, or antechamber, not just a passageway like we thought. It's the highest point in the maze we've explored so far. Every hallway slants downward from there, sometimes spiraling off into the unexplored darkness, and other times meeting with other passageways and returning. Dating these ruins is a bit difficult. The architectural styles in play are reminiscent of earlier construction from the Old Kingdom. One example of this is the many car doors all over the place. However, the imagery and hieroglyphs so far suggest a much later origin, as far as the 19th dynasty. Ra and Osiris did not gain this level of prominence until then. Thoth is also present all over the place, and not just as the original moon god he started out being, according to Dr. Alamin. We've mapped out a good portion of the maze. From the surface entry point, We've got an area about 10,500 square meters determined. We've also found the first passageway that goes under one of the previously mapped ones. This complex could be quite deep. Journal entry, evening of June 16th, 1976. Today was our first fatality. The maze, it would seem, has teeth. 
The lad's name was Shakti. He was one of the crew I rode here with in the convoy. Nice chap. Spoke excellent English and had a splendid sense of humor. I'll miss him. He was killed after stepping on, of all things, a pressure plate that caused several small spears to shoot out at him from hidden points in the wall. What is this pulp fiction nonsense from the twenties? The passageway he went down was the first we've seen to be marked with the symbol of Apep, some sort of serpent chaos deity according to Alamin. I never heard of it before. Until Shakti's death, we had covered an additional 3,400 square meters. The tunnels get tighter and smaller and more confusing the deeper one goes. Those fake car doors are everywhere, and while they do make for useful navigation markers, they bother me. Eerie as can be. The hieroglyphs and pictograms are changing with the depth too. Apep's snake was seen on the trapped passages walls and on more walls discovered after the tragedy. No one's gone down them for fear of additional traps. Journal entry, morning of June 17th, 1976. Outrageous. We're halting exploration of the maze until further notice. Shakti's death was tragic, yes, but we must continue down. Now that blood has been shed, it's more important to finish what we started. I'll try to convince Dr. Alamine to let something continue. She's become rather spooked. The hieroglyphs going down into the depths go against everything she knows about how the ancient Egyptians viewed the world. She talks about how important this idea of Mat was to them, the notion of a universal order that was upheld by the gods. Isfet, its opposite, represents strife, suffering, or something like that. Alamin says the old stories were always about the clash between the two, but no side ever prevailed. Isfet always remained in its place. Even when Osiris was cut into pieces, they put him back together with a new job in the underworld. But the pictograms here tell vastly different stories. Osiris' pieces are scattered and burned. Ra, the sun god who rides around the sky in a boat, gets attacked relentlessly by this snake, Apep, and Thoth is seen beheaded with his papyrus and writings torn to shreds. She thinks this was some sort of nasty cult worship center, and it's clearly disturbing her. I had to remind her that she doesn't actually believe in this nonsense several times, devout Sunni that she is. She smiled and thanked me, but I could tell when she walked away that it still bothered her. Poor girl. Journal entry, evening of June 17th, 1976. Success. I've convinced Alamin that we should press on. We'll just be really, really careful of traps. Personal correspondence, sent June 18th, 1976. Joshua, how have you been faring at home, my boy? Has your sister been behaving herself? <laughs> Silly question. Why would I even waste ink writing that? I told you they invited me to check out a new dig site. I'm afraid there isn't very much digging involved. Once they got the tomb opened, we cleared out some rubble and got to studying everything. Yes, I know, you think that's the boring part, but I'm telling you that one day you'll realize it's really the best part. The digging is just like unwrapping the present. Then you get to play with it. What's really exciting is what we found beneath the tomb. It happened completely by accident. One of our researchers knocked over a statue and it broke a hole in the floor of the tomb revealing an entirely new network of halls and passageways underneath. Don't worry, he's all right. Nothing bruised but his ego, you know. The tunnels are exciting. You know those hieroglyphs you always were curious about? They're everywhere, and they tell such stories. Plagues and blights, battles of the gods, legends of terrifying undead monsters. You'd love it.
There are even traps, just like in those stories you used to read. Don't worry, I'm fine. Nothing a little caution can't prevent. Another couple weeks and I should be able to visit. I've missed you and your little sister. See you before you know it. Love, Dad. Journal Entry, evening of June 19th, 1976. Three more dead today. The maze is getting more dangerous. In addition to the pressure plate that killed Shakti, one passage, it seems, was designed to completely cave in on itself if too many traveled through it at once. Weight distribution on the tiles, I suppose. The rest of the team is looking into specifics. We are once again on hold. Alamine won't budge this time. Why can't she see? We have to keep going. There's something amazing down there. I can feel it. It's so close, I can almost taste it. Or hear it. It's like a subtle music in the background. Too quiet to make out, but loud enough you know it's there. Journal entry, morning of June 20th, 1976. Idiots. Cravens. The rest of the team is refusing to go any farther. Alamine won't allow any more ventures into the depths. She says we can work with what we have. I'm amazed the woman is still standing. The way she shakes when looking down into that antechamber. I've seen recovering alcoholics in better states. The rest of them, the rest of the team, the diggers, the researchers, they share her dread. If you want something done, you've got to do it yourself. I'm going in tonight. I've got several torches with fresh batteries, a copy of the map we have so far, and paper and pencils to keep it going. I've got to find it. Wait. It? What is it? How do I know there's an it? I know there's something down there. I can feel it in my bones. But that was a very specific it. You know, this desert heat may be getting to me. Never thought I'd say this, but I miss Brighton. I'll hold off for the night and see what they say tomorrow. Journal entry, afternoon of June 20th, 1976. My nerve failed me earlier. Obviously, I must continue down. The plan is back on. We'll show those cravens. Handwritten note recovered on June 22nd, 1976, from passage 86A by Dr. Sky Alamine and Search Party. Passage list. See map. 1A, 2, 4B, 9A, 11A, 16C, 26F, 32B, 44A, scratched out, replaced with 45B, 57C, 58C, 59C, 60C, 6. The rest of the note was torn off. At the site of the recovery, the floor had several unexplained dents and grooves in it, as though something heavy smashed into it several times. In the distance, the party could hear the sound of running water, perhaps an underground stream, and what sounded like Dr. Simkin's voice chanting. Journal entry of Dr. Alamine, August 25th, 1976. I failed to convince them to blow it up. That place is evil and must be destroyed. It took Dr. Simkins away. It sounds crazy, but that place didn't just attract him. It chose him. He was always talking about how fascinating it was down there. How the images on the walls were so beautiful, so crisp. But at the same time, he was repelled by some of them. The ones on the top levels, he scoffed at them. He mocked the displays of Ra and Osiris, Thoth, the Ogdoad, Isis, Anubis, Hathor, Horus. But when he talked about the deeper ones with, with that snake, and the way it was attacking the gods, 
His voice almost turned to loving. He didn't care about the researchers we lost. He just needed to be there, to get farther down, find something, find it, a very specific it. And what I'm most ashamed of, I felt exactly the same way. I still feel it. It's like a song in the background, too quiet to understand, but too loud to ignore. I can't get it out of my head. I must convince them that place is evil, absolutely evil. I've never been more certain of anything in my life. It's evil, and I want to know its secrets. Does that make me evil? God preserve me, but I hope not. Obituary listing from a London newspaper. Dr. Skye Alamine, May 22nd, 1939 to August 30th, 1976. Service was held on Saturday, September 4th, 9 a.m. at Mallory Brothers Funeral Home. She is survived by her younger sister Amy and her niece Geneva, preceded in death by her parents and brother.